This presentation is concerned with adjusting entries for deferred expense and deferred revenue items. This is correlated to Module 3 of the online course manual. A second presentation, the adjusting entries for accrued revenues and expenses, is also available. In Modules 1 and 2, we learn to record transactions as they occurred during the period. Now in Module 3, we're addressing another issue. We've ended the accounting period, we view the trial balance, and we realize that many of the balances on the trial balance are not correct. It's not because we made errors during the period, it's because some things have happened that were not recorded after all. The adjusting entries are made at the end of the accounting period before the financial statements are prepared. They're necessary because many events that did change the account balances weren't recorded during the period, and for good reason. For example, the supplies account was not reduced every time a paper clip or rubber band was used. Likewise, several other account changes were not recorded when they occurred because it wasn't convenient or even feasible to do so. So now, at the end of the period, we must play catch-up and make these entries. If we don't, the account balances and the financial statements will not be correct. Our trial balance is displayed on this screen, and you'll note that many of the accounts are highlighted. Highlighted accounts are the accounts that need to be adjusted. Events have happened that did change these account balances, but they have not yet been recorded. The highlighted accounts in green are ones that represent deferrals. The ones in yellow are accruals. These terms will be explained further in the remainder of the presentation. Adjusting entries for deferrals are one type of adjustment. Under accrual basis accounting rules, payments for things such as supplies or equipment are recorded as assets since they represent resources that will benefit the business in future periods. However, these assets are eventually used up and the benefit expires. When this happens, the asset becomes a business expense. Terminology. When something is deferred, it is put off until later. By recording supplies and equipment purchases as assets, we are deferring the recording of an expense until later, when the asset is used up or expires or wears out. Another name for deferred expense is prepaid expense, and prepaid insurance is another of the deferred expense asset accounts. Insurance coverage benefits the business, and the payment of insurance premiums is recorded by debiting this asset account. Over time, however, as the benefit expires, the asset account must be reduced and an expense must be recorded. Here's our trial balance again, and we have two accounts, prepaid insurance and supplies, highlighted. Since it was not feasible to record the use of each paperclip during the period, nor each day's expired insurance coverage, the balances for supplies and prepaid insurance in our trial balance are incorrect. They must be reduced to account for the supplies that were used up and for the expiration of insurance coverage during the period. Therefore, we must adjust these deferred expense asset accounts in order to correct them. The supplies account balance on our trial balance is $350. Normally, the balance in supplies merely represents what was in the account at the beginning of the period plus any purchases of supplies that were made during the period. We have not tried to reduce the account every time supplies were used in the business. If we take an inventory of the existing supplies and determine that the cost of the supplies we still have is only $200, then we know that $150 of supplies have been used up and have become an expense of the period. The adjusting the entry that is required is to reduce supplies by crediting it for $150 and debit supplies expense to increase it by $150. Likewise, the balance in prepaid insurance is also incorrect. The $1,000 balance that is in the account now represents the cost of the premium 
that we paid for earlier in the year. If we know that the $1,000 premium was paid on December 1st and that the coverage period is 10 months, then by the end of December, one month worth of the coverage will have expired. One month out of 10 is one-tenth and one-tenth of a thousand dollars is one hundred dollars worth of the coverage that has now expired and become an expense during the month of December. The adjusting entry to record the expiration of the coverage is credit prepaid insurance to reduce it by one hundred dollars and debit insurance expense to increase it by one hundred dollars. Note that insurance expense was not originally on our trial balance. It will appear now if we redo the trial balance. The equipment account also represents a prepaid expense asset account and it must also be adjusted. If the equipment has been used at all, then wear and tear has occurred. After many years of use, the equipment will be completely worn out and will have lost all of its benefit to the company, the asset will have become an expense. The period by period reduction in the amount of benefit the equipment can provide to the business is referred to as depreciation. And just as we have done with the other deferred expense asset accounts, supplies and prepaid insurance, we must reduce the equipment account and record this depreciation expense. However, equipment is different than supplies and prepaid insurance. The cost concept requires that we maintain the original cost of the equipment, $5,000, in the equipment account. Therefore, we will not be able to reduce the equipment account directly. However, we can do so indirectly. You may wonder about the way the cost concept applies to supplies and to prepaid insurance. We did not violate the cost principle in our earlier adjusting entries when we reduced prepaid insurance and reduced supplies. After all, the supplies have been used up and all we're doing is recording the supplies presently at the original cost of the supplies that we still have on hand. The rest has been used up. Prepaid insurance has expired partially so what's left as a balance in the prepaid insurance account is nine months worth of coverage. That is what we have left and the $900 balance in prepaid insurance is equal to the cost of the nine months worth of coverage. The cost of equipment, no matter how worn out it might become, however, will always be $5,000. So this balance must remain in the equipment account according to the cost concept and will be forced to reduce the account indirectly by recording a credit not to the equipment account but to a separate associated account called accumulated depreciation. In effect we will have two accounts in the general ledger for our equipment. In addition to the complication of having two accounts in the general ledger now for our equipment, the equipment account itself and then accumulated depreciation, another problem associated with depreciation concerns the determination of the amount to record for depreciation expense. Unlike an insurance policy where there is a contract that states with certainty the term of the coverage the useful life of the equipment can only be estimated. Unlike supplies, where we count at the end of the period to determine how much is left in order to see how much has been used up, the equipment is all still there. It has just become somewhat more worn than it was before. The useful life of the equipment can only be estimated. If we estimate that this equipment will last 50 months before it's completely worn out, then the estimated monthly depreciation expense amount would be $5,000 original cost divided by 50 months of life, $100 per month. If the equipment was purchased on December 1st, the adjusting entry to record one month's depreciation would be credit accumulated depreciation, 
for $100 and debit the depreciation expense account for $100. Well, now we understand that two accounts will be used for our equipment in the general ledger, the equipment account and accumulated depreciation. What is accumulated depreciation? The account is referred to as a contra account because its balance goes contra to the balance in the equipment account. That is, its balance will be subtracted from the $5,000 equipment account balance on the balance sheet and the remainder, the undepreciated portion of the assets cost, which is called the book value, is then listed among the assets. In this illustration of the balance sheet, we can see that equipment is reported at its original cost of $5,000. This is in conformity with the cost concept. But directly beneath the $5,000, we subtract out the balance in accumulated depreciation so that the book value for the asset reported on the balance sheet is only $4,900. After 50 months of recording depreciation, the balance in accumulated depreciation will be 5000 and the book value for the asset reported on the balance sheet will be zero. It will be completely worn out and useless at that point. In addition to making adjusting entries for deferred expense items, such as supplies, prepaid insurance, and equipment, we must also make adjusting entries for deferred revenue items. Deferred revenues are called unearned revenues. The rules under accrual basis accounting require, as we know, that revenue be recorded only when and if it has been earned. Unearned revenues arise from situations where customers pay cash in advance for services that will be performed later. Since the work has not yet been done, the revenue cannot be recorded until it has been earned. So, we defer the recognition of the revenue in the accounts by recording a liability called unearned revenue instead. After all, if the customer changes his or her mind and fires us from the job, if we have not earned the revenue, we have to return it to the customer. Something that we have that belongs to someone else and that we are obligated to give to them is a liability. So unearned revenues, until the work is done, represents a liability. Our trial balance does list an unearned revenue account, and the balance in that account is $1,000. Suppose we determine that this came from an advance payment received from a customer on December 1st. We must now determine how much of the work has been done to see how much of the revenue has been earned. Suppose we find that one-fourth of the job has been completed. This means that one-fourth of the $1,000 or $250 has been earned. Our adjusting entry involves a credit then to the revenue account for the $250 that has been earned and a debit to unearned revenue for $250. This reduces the unearned revenue liability account balance down to $750, which is the amount that is still unearned. This screen displays the original trial balance that we started with on the left side, and on the right is the trial balance as it looks now after the adjusting entries have been made. This is referred to as an adjusted trial balance. The highlighted accounts are the ones that have changed as a result of our adjusting entries. Note that many, if not most, of the account balances did change. Therefore, if we want the information reported on the financial statements to be correct, it's very important that we make the adjusting entries and that we make them correctly. The table on this slide summarizes the effects of the failure to make an adjusting entry on the income statement and on the balance sheet. 